Hey folks, Robbie Payne with Chrome Unbox coming at you today with a full review of the Toshiba Chromebook 2. Now I know some of you guys have been waiting a little while uh, for me to get around to this review and there's a good reason for that. Uh, I allowed this device to become kind of my daily driver. I will say I've used it in combination with the Asus Chromebox, the i3 version. So a lot of my daily work is being done on that Chromebox. Uh, but I did take this thing for a spin on a few things. Uh, for a few days of work and uh, took it on some trips and, and all that kind of stuff. And so I've spent some real time with this device. And I have to say, uh, from the beginning, when I opened this thing up and my expectations of what it was going to be and how it was going to perform, it has surpassed all of them. Um, the sound quality has surpassed what I expected. The screen um, quality has surpassed even what I expected. The, uh, the keyboard, the trackpad, and, and the performance overall has surpassed. Now I will say this is the, uh, this is the version with four gigs of RAM. Uh, it, is, it has the Bay Trail processor in it obviously, uh, and the full 1080p IPS display. And so <clears throat> it is the, the upper level of what, uh, what you get on this device. Let me take a quick tour real quick. If you haven't seen the unboxing, uh, just real fast, you got a USB 3.0, 2.0 here, Kensington earphone microphone slot. Uh, nothing really across the back, um, save for you know screws and that kind of stuff. There are no speaker ports. There's no vents. Nothing uh, because this is a Bay Trail processor. Doesn't need any of those things. And the speakers actually come up straight from the keyboard, a la uh, uh, Chromebook Pixel and HP Chromebook 11. Over here you have an SD card slot, which is a little finicky. The way the lip. I don't even know if it's possible for me to show you this. The way the lip is, um, it's a little finicky getting the card in and out, but the card will sit in completely flush. And then that is finished off with another USB 2.0. So it's kind of a shame you only get one 3.0. Um, I'll be honest with you, I don't use USB ports that often. Um, on my Chromebox, I keep uh, a Logitech dongle plugged in so that I can uh, use uh, the T650 trackpad. That's about it. Um, I do have it plugged in. Like I said, I've been using it. Um, and I've wore the battery out. And it does get great battery life, for those of you wondering. Uh, the device easily gets seven to eight hours, no problem, uh, without breaking a sweat. If you're not killing it and you're controlling, because I, I really like the display, so I was leaving it cranked up almost full. Uh, three quarters is about all I would go down to. <clears throat> uh, it's easily lasting that. I'm sure if you kept it about halfway, you could easily squeeze uh, nine, ten hours out of it probably. Um, it, so much of that stuff is dependent on what you're doing with it, how with the processor load. Um, screen lightness, darkness, all those kind of things, and so uh, battery tests are really, really kind of all over the place, if you ask me. But um, really, real time use, using it all day, you have no problem getting through the day. And, and honestly, for right now, that's the marker until we get to the point where we're getting through two days, um, and then that would be the marker at that point. Uh, another uh, thing that some people have, have commented on because this is a 1080 um, uh, display. A lot of the pieces uh, of the user interface are a little bit small, and to be honest with you, eventually if it's in your lap and it's close to your face, that not that kind of becomes a non-issue. Um, and I found that to be true for me. Uh, you know, all the stuff up here, all your text is kind of small. Cool thing is, I did some research. Uh, apparently, at one point there was a flag that would allow um, uh, some scaling of the of the interface. Well, for a lot of people, and unfortunately, Google hasn't done this well. They haven't. Um, told people about this very well and so I finally found it and buried in a conversation thread somewhere. What they did, if you go in and search for display settings um, and go in here, we can actually crank this. You've got the uh, resolutions that are listed here and so there's 12, uh, 960 by 540, 1260 by 675 and it's a random 1536 by 864 uh, which is weird um, but cool thing is if you switch it to that Chrome OS kicks in, does scaling automatically. And so, let me pull this up here for you so you can see it real close. Um, it's going to be sideways just so I can get, get it in here. Let's see if it will focus. There we go. You can see no pixelization. Things aren't getting all blurry and funky. Uh, everything's just larger. Uh, it looks more like if you were looking at closer to like a 1600 by 900 display. It's not quite as large as the uh, 720p or 768 kind of displays but makes things plenty large uh, text is still nice and sharp everything is scaling properly and so that is a huge difference maker to me um, I did get used to using it 1080p and it didn't it didn't drive me nuts but it's so nice to know that for uh, these these higher resolution displays uh, there is now a fix and it's very simple you just change the resolution 
Google does need to do a better job of showing that when you go to select resolution. Um, somehow they need to make that very clear because most people think, well, if I change that resolution, it's going to things are going to become blurry because used to that's what it did. Uh, interestingly enough, you can actually crank the resolution up even higher than that. Uh, let me leave that open. And um, let me get back into there real fast. You can actually go above 2400 by 1350. Again, these are some weird uh, resolutions. Um, but um, so things are even smaller, yeah, but it works and it runs it. Um, so I'm not sure why you'd want to do that. But for the time being, I'm actually going to leave it on that larger. Uh, the larger one just so it's easier for me to see my way around uh, a few of you wanted me to run some octane stuff um, I'm gonna run that real fast And what I've routinely been seeing is somewhere in the eight to nine thousand range um, which is pretty respectable um, and, and that's that's reflective in uh, This device's ability to move around is it the fastest Chromebook on the market? No, not really um, but it's an Intel based one. It's fanless and it's thin. So that's all really neat stuff. And that's the stuff you like about, um, thinner devices. It's the thing, you know, it's, it's a very good feeling, uh, device. It's much more sturdy feeling to me than the, the original Toshiba Chromebook. Uh, so it's pretty well built. Uh, we'll do a speaker test here in just a second, but it runs everything quite snappy. Um, and I think I did this in the unboxing. I can't remember off the top of my head, but I'll open up a couple sites that are routinely terrible on uh, arm chips, fanless kind of designs. And what I found is that uh, this actually handles it pretty well. Again, you get multiple tabs open. You start seeing a little bit of that struggle going on. Um, it's a lot to ask for a Chromebook. Plus it's pushing 1080 pixels as well. And so likely if you kept it in a lower pixel rating, you might get a little performance boost, probably not much. Um, but ultimately, uh, the device outperforms what you expect. And, and that, to me, is a huge deal. Um, I actually got this on sale from Best Buy for $300 instead of the $329. So at $300, wow, that's kind of low. So I don't know if maybe some of the problem is um, the rendering. Let me, let me sign out, and I will rerun that again. Uh, because I also had Linux running in the background there too. Um, so that, there was no problem there either, and no problems um, getting into um, uh, getting Ubuntu to run uh, just as I would on any other uh, Chromebook. So really no limitations here um, whatsoever on this device. And like I said, you're, you're probably gonna run into a few things where you get a little bit of slowdown, but ultimately um, the device just really does a good job uh, it, it, it pumping through pretty much anything you would you would need it to. Like I said, I did my work on it. Multiple tabs open, um, you know, style sheets open, FTP clients open, Ubuntu running in a window, all that kind of stuff. Um, and hopefully, I'll I'll have the chance here uh, in the next little bit for you. Those of you who are curious, you can actually run your Ubuntu uh, environment in a Chrome OS window now. There's uh, a couple steps you can take if you have Crouton installed. Uh, to actually run that in a separate window. So just minimize it and have it right there in your desktop. I had all that stuff running. Like I said, and I was able to do some work. Full disclosure though, as much as I like this device, um, I had the opportunity uh, for a couple days, uh, my daughter was sick, I was gonna be at home working. And so my choice was uh, twofold. I could either just keep my Chromebook and work from it for a few days. I think it was three days. Yeah, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday of last week or come to the office, grab my Chromebox and my monitor and go home with that. And I'll be honest, I took the Chromebox home. Um, I, I, I don't know if it's a combination of a few things. Okay, score's a little higher. I did get close. I think I got 8,900 uh, at one point. So, uh, you know, take that for what you will. Um, you know, some of the ARM ones are getting five to 6,000. So it does sit comfortably between, and it does in, in real life, it sits comfortably between um, the ARM Chromebooks, whether it's the Tegra K1, uh, or the Exynos and the Samsungs, or um, you know the the full full fledged uh, Celeron Intel processors. So it sits right in between those. And I will say, I feel like it sits more towards the Intel processors, which kind of makes sense. But um, you know, being fanless, being broad, or being a, a, a Bay Trail, I just didn't have a lot of expectations. And after you know, I was surprised by those, by the fact that it outperformed what I expected. 
But once I got used to it, I kind of kept waiting for that initial slowdown. Like I just felt like, okay, I was surprised. It took me off guard. But now reality is going to set in and I'm going to kind of get annoyed by this thing. And to a point, like what I was saying just a minute ago, I kind of did. Um, because I did choose to take my Chromebox home. You know, it's got an i3. I've upgraded it to 8 gigs of RAM. It's kind of a beast. Um, and it never gives me any issues whatsoever. And so this one does lag from time to time. But again, for common usage, no problems whatsoever. If you're a person that's just sitting at home, you're going to watch some videos on it. We're going to pull up a, we're going to pull up a video real quick. Uh, you're going to watch videos on it. Uh, you're going to watch some movies, that kind of stuff. The screen is so pretty. It looks so good. Um, the the actual built-in sound is, is really good as well. Um, and all those things combined together, it doesn't have any problem playing full HD video. When you when you take all that together, for something that is, is your primary computer at home, uh, for, for social media, for watching videos, for keeping up with stuff, for writing emails, for writing paper, it has no problem with Google Docs, all those kind of things. That this thing really, um, really fits the bill. You know, let's watch uh, the Avengers trailer. Hopefully, this doesn't get me in any trouble. I'm, I don't think it will, but we'll just watch a, a snippet of it. We're gonna blow this guy up. 1080p. Oops, full screen it. This vulnerable world. He's a great sound of any of us. And you'll hear they're loud. Everyone creates the thing yeah. they dread. Ultra in the flesh. No matter who wins or loses, trouble always comes around. And you'll notice, even on a glossy display with some pretty high lights, uh, you're not getting a ton of glare, which is pretty impressive on a dark trailer. So, we'll, uh, we'll get out of this guy. Um, anyway, so... It kind of gives you an idea. I mean, we're getting we're getting full HD. I, actually, you know what? Yeah. So we're getting full HD um, playback, no problem. You're getting some separation stereo uh, left and right coming out of these speakers. And they're nice and full sounding uh, because they're coming straight up out of the keyboard rather than being kind of nestled underneath the device. And so it actually uh, adds to making the uh, media um, experience on this device pretty good. Um, okay thought about that as it was playing. To be fair, let's go back and do one more. So that technically wasn't running at full HD. Um, so, like I said, let me be fair. Just so you guys can see. Yeah, this is quite funny. Jimmy Fallon finding out Nicole Kidman. I don't know if you remember this, but we, we met actually kind of had a thing for him. So if you haven't seen this clip, it's rating pretty high on YouTube. You should check it out. It's really funny if you like Fallon. Uh, our internet's not doing so hot. I don't know if you remember this, but we, we met before. Oh, I remember. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember? I remember this, it was really embarrassing for me. Yes. It was? Yeah, Do you want me to I have not seen you since then. I have not. Right. Oh, got a correct. little stutter um, there. But this was like years ago, and I... Do you want me to tell my version of this? Yeah, story? you tell your version. <laughs> I'm walking down the street in New York City. Yeah. My friend Rick calls me and says... Okay, so we're getting some jitters here. Uh, part of that could be due to Wi-Fi being a little slow. But you see, for the most part, it's rendering fine. And I can tell you, in, in my experience, and the buffering's happening pretty good here. I could be in your apartment in like 10 minutes. I go, you're going to bring Nicole Kidman over? And from time to time, you do get a little stutter here and there. Um, that was actually pretty bad, much worse than what I've experienced thus far. So who knows? Um, could be indicative of some issues. Could just be a, a bad run. Um, and so uh, overall, let me say this about this device. Um, it'll surprise you. If you haven't got your hands on it, if you haven't messed with it, if you haven't seen it in person, 
the the display is stunningly gorgeous um, and again it's IPS so it doesn't really lose anything as you tilt around it just looks the same always which is awesome um, it's, it's just a beautiful beautiful display the device feels good the edge here is a little sharp for uh, lengthy typing it kind of cuts in your hand a little bit I will say that uh, trackpad is huge spaced well nice and responsive keyboard feels good there's not a whole lot of give in the center of the keyboard uh, I, I'm just impressed with the device I really am and especially at a $300 price point very impressed with it um, if, if you're doing um, probably the bleeding edge of what Chrome OS is capable of it might not be quite enough for you but for the most part for most users for most people picking up a Chromebook I can highly recommend um, uh, this device uh, and it's one of the first ones it seems like in a long time that I could say you know what don't get the HP 14 or don't get the Acer C720 for most folks get this thing uh, because it is a fantastic device uh, so I get it. I give it a huge thumbs up. Um, it's a it's a great piece of equipment, um, and it hopefully is is a sign of things to come for Chromebooks. I know Acer has uh, an upcoming 15.6 inch Chromebook that has an IPS like display, um, and so it's a huge difference. You know, better speakers. We're seeing better speakers, better displays, better builds. Um, uh, actual, you know, some design effort going into these things, and so it's very encouraging uh, to see this happening. Hopefully they just keep coming and we keep seeing new innovations in the Chromebook space. But for now, the Toshiba Chromebook 2, overall, um, probably for the median user, to me is the best Chromebook experience on the market at this point. Between price, uh, hardware, and internal hardware, um, it, it, it's just a great experience. So I recommend it. Um, if you're thinking about pulling the trigger, pull the trigger. Hopefully this video has helped some of you guys sort some of those things out. Uh, if you like what you see, give it a thumbs up. Uh, subscribe to the channel um, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks guys.